Hey farmers, Michael here from Growing Farmers and the Farm on Central. And what I wanted to share today was all about field blocks, setting up your fields. You can see here, big open field. How do you break it up? How do you make it manageable? So a lot of people say, well, run rows from here all the way because it's more efficient. No, because no one wants to pick a 300 foot long row of beans. So how do you set it up? So as you can see here, we've got kind of a square set up. We've got our irrigation there. We've got some tarps laid out. So how wide do you make it? How long do you make it? Do you size it for your irrigation? Do you size it for your uh, tarps? Do you size it for your paper pot planter? Um, do you break them with 100 foot, 300 foot? That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. So we're gonna walk into the barn, get on the whiteboard and kind of sketch things out and talk about all the different parameters you gotta think about when you're trying to size your field blocks. All right, folks, so here we are, whiteboard. Can't have enough of the whiteboards in your barn. And so what we're gonna talk about is the, the big picture when you're looking at field blocks, because you've got, obviously, to think about a couple different things in the field. First, how you're getting amendment spread, how you're getting compost spread, how you're putting water down, how you're moving product around the field, like how are you getting in with a tractor to harvest, um, and when it's wet, how do you do that? And so we really like to think about travel lanes. So what we can do, instead of like taking the entire field and planting it all the way across, we like to break it up with travel lanes. And obviously, depending on the size of your vehicle, as well as depending on the size of your trailer. So usually you're taking in, uh, if you're taking a pickup truck, it's gonna be shorter, but if you're taking a tractor and trailer, depending on the length of your trailer, depends on how wide your head row has to be because like, Long trailer, it's gonna veer more on the side here and crush the corner crops right here. So that's something you have to size. Um, the other thing to think about is your irrigation. With most micro irrigation, let's say you're using mega nets or you're using the uh, wobblers, they're gonna come about 40 feet wide, between 35 and 40 feet wide. So I'm just gonna put 40 feet there. Um, uh, with tarps, uh, tarps come anywhere from usually 24 feet up to, I think, 40 feet wide, maybe 35, 36 feet wide. Um, so that's a good one there as well. But 100 foot by a 40 foot tarp is really, really heavy. You don't want a 50 foot tarp. They have 50 footers. Those are really heavy. You don't want to move those around. Um, and then you also have to think about things like row cover. So you always want to think about your row cover as well, as well as like insect netting. So how wide that is, as well as, you know, what amounts of crops do you plant? So are you planting 300 feet of radishes every single week? Or are you planting like 25 or 30 feet of like six different crops? Because it makes a lot more sense if you're seeing a lot of little crops to scale down your beds compared to if you're doing 1,200 feet of most crops because you have a 1,200 member CSA. In that case, I've seen 300, 500, 800 foot row sections and they work out really good. Look at a uh, case in point would be Roxbury Farm, really long sections works out really well for them. All the weeding is mechanicalized, even their bean picking is mechanicalized. So it's, uh, they're not a lot of hand labor on that. It makes sense to have that. Now, how they're set up, I believe they're either eight or 12 beds wide for a section. And then they got a travel lane. So let's kind of, uh, so let's just call this right here. We've got you know our, our section here, you got a travel lane. Travel lanes, we like to plant the perennial crops. So either like Dutch white clover, um, some grasses, this is so we can drive it in any weather. And then the other thing too is like, if you're doing large scale irrigation, you'll probably run a traveler gun right down this. And then you just run the gun here and it'll sweep and cover obviously, you know, as it goes back and forth like this, it'll cover the entire section. Um, so that's how you want to set those up. Now for smaller farms, um, for here, we're probably going to be going with 100 foot blocks. Now I haven't quite gotten there. We may go shorter because the paper pots are come in, I think it's nine, uh, 986 foot length. Uh, foot uh, pots or 43 foot pots or 131 foot pots. So we're trying to think about going like a, a multiple of that, if that makes sense. Um, and also looking at ir our irrigation capacity. So we'll be putting in a hundred gallon a minute well, which means we'll be pretty much able to irrigate as much or as little as we want. So it doesn't mean, care if we have 300 foot blocks or hundred foot blocks, but if you have like, let's say 10 gallon a minute, like we do now, you want to have a short block so that you can put on probably at least a quarter inch an hour. And the reason for that is that you are able to then water in like three to four hour sections. Um, because if you water too slow, th there's going to be more evaporation than there actually is that goes into the ground. So it almost gets to the point of no return if you put it on just too little water. So you have to think about that. So um, the width of the block. Now, 
that really varies. And the other thing is the width of your bench. If you're doing, let's say, a market garden style, you're probably on a four foot centers, which means you're doing like a 30 inch, 30 inch top. Usually they do 18 inch rows in there, um, like this, something like that. If you're doing tractors, tractors predominantly, your smallest is gonna be probably around a five foot center, 60 inches, you're gonna do a 42 inch bed top. As you get bigger, uh, we were on a 72 inch, we're thinking about that, we may go back to a five foot. And then if you get even bigger than that, I've seen as big as like 88 inches or even 100 inch centers for some of these bigger farms that are just doing large capacity. So you gotta think about how many beds you want too. Typically we see eight to 12. Um, for tarps, we like to split them. So we do a one tarp, one tarp there. Um, and uh, so like a 24, 24, that gives us like, usually we overlap. So that gives us either, if we're doing five foot centers, that would give us like eight beds um, or maybe nine beds. And then what we're gonna do too is on the north side of our sections, we're gonna do a habitat strip. So that'll be uh, pretty widely spaced right here. It'll be a perennial crop. That'll be for attracting bugs, uh, beneficials. It'll also be for providing a windbreak. So pretty much then every single block on the north side, there'll be this um, and uh, then a drive path. So it'll be this and then a drive path and then another section. Um, you know, I like to have spaces on the side to put things like row covers and uh, row cover bags and that sort of thing. So all sorts of things to think about as you're setting up your field. So again, I'm gonna kind of recap this because I know I discussed a lot. Think about the size uh, and the amounts that you're planting and try to size your block so you can plant a full bed at once. Um, think about your irrigation, your row cover sizes, the amount of people you have, and that's gonna help you. Um, with the blocks, it really kind of varies, kind of how you wanna set up your farm. Think about though the width of your beds. Um, you know, some people like the market garden style four foot. I prefer to go wider because the wider you are in the bed top, the less paths you have per acre, the more efficient you are per acre as well. So definitely think about that as well. And then just make sure you do give yourself big enough hedgerows. So we kind of showed you this. Make sure your hedgerow is big enough so that you can turn around, come back down the other side, um, turn your equipment around. So I typically like to see 20 or 30 foot hedgerow, hedgerows for that aspect. If you have like walking tractors, you could probably do five or 10 foot. Um, so again, it kind of depends on your scale with what you're sitting out. So there you go, a little bit of an overview, thinking about field blocks. How is this gonna affect your farm? Right below, if you have further comments or questions, tell me like the width you are, the kind of size you are, why that makes sense for your farm. And go ahead, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, do whatever it takes to turn the notifications on so you can make sure you get awesome videos like this every single day into your inbox and share. Guys, share this with another farmer friend that may need this training. Again, our goal is to help you grow your farm and become a thriving farmer.